Today in our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 2500, we're going to be installing PTC's custom fit engine oil filter. Prior to doing your oil change and replacing your oil filter, it is recommended that you get your oil up to operating temperature because warm, hot oil is thinner so it will drain more of the oil out than if it was thicker, cooler oil. Additionally, I like to pop the top on the oil fill cap because that will allow air to go in as the oil drains out, preventing any blub, blub, blub gurgling out of your drain pan. This will also let more of the oil come out. So you're getting the most of the old oil out and putting fresh oil in. We're now underneath of our Sierra. Here's our oil pan located here. And if you go just to the left of the oil pan and straight up above our drive shaft, if you have a four wheel drive model, you'll find your oil filter there. Now, before we take our oil filter loose, I like to drain the oil first. So we're gonna take our wrench here and we're going to loosen up our drain plug. Our drain plug wrench here is on a swivel on both sides, which makes it easier to get into tight spaces and get that perfect leverage you'll need to take your drain plug off. Our Sierra here uses a 13 millimeter for its drain plug, so we've got it on there. You see how we get that nice swivel, we can get that perfect spot we need to get it off. We've also got a nice long handle to get plenty of leverage, making it easy to get this cracked loose. So now we'll loosen it by going counterclockwise. And once you've got it loose, you'll take it the rest of the way by hand. We'll now position our drain pan underneath our drain plug here. I do like to come back a little bit because it is kind of shoot out of there. So we'll position it about there. And now we can take our drain plug out. When I'm taking the drain plug out, I like to do it by hand and I push inward to help keep the oil from splashing all over the place. Once the drain plug's all the way loose, you're gonna to wanna to pull it away from the oil pan quickly. And now it'll go into our drain pan. I like to kind of move it up because as it drains out, this is gonna get closer and closer to the pan and eventually it will start to kind of run down the pan and drip off. So we wanna make sure we catch it all. Now that we've got our oil mostly drained down to a little trickle here, it'll be much easier for us to take our filter out. Now in some cases, if your filter's not as close to your drain plug like ours is here, you may need to wait until this finished straining, put your plug back in, and then move on to your filter. But since our pan is big enough and we can get to it, we're just gonna slide it over. We'll now remove our filter, and Flow Tools makes a variety of different styles of filter wrenches. We're gonna be using the band style here to loosen up our filter as it's typically quite tight because it's been on there for so long. So we'll get our filter wrench on there and we'll now loosen it by turning it counterclockwise. Once you've got your filter loosened, you can typically start unscrewing it by hand. We've now positioned our oil pan just to the left of our drain plug here, so that way it's underneath our filter. If your vehicle didn't have a close enough drain plug to our filter like our Sierra does, you may need to completely drain your oil before moving on to your filter. Now that we are underneath our filter with our pan and we've loosened it with our filter wrench, we can finish taking it off the rest of the way by hand. And I like to turn it slowly until it starts to drain. So we're unscrewing it here and you can kind of start to see some of the oil start to drain. Now since our filter here is horizontal, we can go ahead and take it off the rest of the way but often your filter is vertical, like you see here, and you're gonna to wanna to let that drain out or else you're gonna have oil running all down your arm and on your sleeves and make a good old mess. So we're gonna avoid that. So we're now gonna continue twisting it off. Once we get it loose, we'll put our filter down in our pan and let it continue to drain out of the filter into our drain pan. Now we've got our filter off and you can see there's where our filter goes, but if you look around the outside, you'll see a black ring. In most cases, when you take your oil filter off, the rubber gasket will stay with the filter. But if it does not and stays on your engine side, you wanna make sure you remove that gasket. If you put your new filter on and double up the gaskets by leaving the old one there, it will leak guaranteed, and it will make a big mess, and it could potentially cause engine damage if you run your engine too long without oil in it. So we're gonna take that gasket off and we're just gonna to toss that down in our drain pan. We've now opened up our new filter out of our box. You're gonna to wanna to take some of the old oil that's draining, get just a little bit on your finger there, and you're gonna to wanna to smear that oil around the rubber gasket 
before you install your filter. This will ensure it doesn't leak. If you put a dry seal on there, it could potentially cause a leak. Now we can just take our filter and thread it on to our filter adapter there. Spin it all the way down, and you want to get it nice and tight by hand. You can tighten it pretty hard by hand. You really can't over tighten it by hand, but you want to make sure you get it nice and tight. You don't want to use a filter wrench because you could potentially damage the filter by crushing it or strip out the threads where it screws on. By doing it by hand, you won't be able to do that. So since we're now nice and tight, we can move back to our drain plug here, reinstall it. If you want to wait till you're down to a drip here, as we are, which means we're basically empty, reinstall that plug. Once your oil is completely drained, we're going to reinstall our drain plug and tighten it back down. You want to make sure you don't over tighten it, you just want it to be nice and snug. You'll now want to refer to your owner's manual to ensure that you have the appropriate oil type and quantity to fill your engine. We're going to use a funnel and we're just going to fill it back up. With it all full, we can take our funnel out and reinstall our fill cap. We'll now start the vehicle, verify that there's no leaks, and then we can double check to make sure it's full. The reason we haven't checked to see if it's full now is because the filter is empty that we just put on, so it will likely read over full until that filter becomes filled with oil. So we'll start it, that'll fill our filter up, and then we can get an accurate reading on how full our oil actually is. And we're just verifying here that after we started it, that our gauges indicate we have good oil pressure. We'll now check our oil level. So you'll want to pull your dipstick out. You want to make sure you wipe it off first to ensure that you don't get any false readings. So we wipe it off, make sure it's clean, reinsert it. We'll pull it back out and we'll check our level. And as you can see there, we're right in the middle of our crosshatch, which is our safe zone. So we're nice and full and ready to hit the road. So as you can see here, I can easily maneuver my oil pan around while it's full of oil. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now I'm gonna show you how I dispose of this oil. So first I take my pan and I go over to my container that is now empty from the new oil that I put in. We're gonna put our funnel in the top of our container and use the handles on our oil drain pan to easily dump the oil right back into our empty container that we used to fill up our vehicle. Once you've filled up your containers, you can then take these to a disposal facility. Many local auto parts stores and service repair shops provide disposal services that you can use to get rid of the soil. You want to keep in mind that it, almost everywhere it's illegal to dispose of oil yourself. You don't want to throw it in the trash or dump it outside. Once you've drained out all the oil, you can put it off to the side or hang it on the wall. And it's not going to hurt if there's a little bit of oil residue inside of it. The polyethylene plastic is resistant against oil's corrosive properties, so it'll be long lasting even though you got a little bit in there. And that completes our installation of PTC's Custom Fit Engine Oil Filter on our 2016 Chevrolet Silverado 2500.